Sports Savers everywhere. It's Mark with georgetune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag for August 26, 2019. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back. Let's talk some wet shaving. What do you got this morning? I've got Maxwell House from my current coffee maker. Mmm. That is really, really good. And look at my mug. Check out my mug. Ohio. I got this as, I got this as a gift from my niece, Kelly. I believe it was a Christmas gift. Christmas gift, birthday gift. I don't know. My birthday comes close to Christmas. so. But uh, yeah, anything with Ohio is a sure winning gift for me. And Maxwell House, who said, who coined the phrase, good to the last drop? Do you know who coined that phrase? Huh? Give you a moment. Yeah, uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, President Teddy Roosevelt coined that phrase, good to the last drop. When he drank it, he said, that is good. That coffee is good to the last drop. All these years later, it's been their, it's been their slogan, thanks to President Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, I, uh, I've read a lot of books about him. Really, really dynamic, interesting individual. Uh, love reading about the guy. All right, let's get right to these questions here. Johnny Mike's 42 asks, if I were to use a witch hazel such as Thayer's, should I only use the witch hazel as an aftershave or do I need to apply a moisturizer afterwards? Well, you know what? Uh, what I do is, if you look at my videos, I'm always applying a moisturizer after a shave. I'll apply a uh, Allen block, then an aftershave, and then a moisturizer on top, and I sometimes carry it down to my face. So there's no hard and fast rule uh, regarding that. I think the only thing that you might be concerned about is how much alcohol content is in the aftershave and if that's drying out your skin. Thayer's makes a couple of different witch hazel formulas. Well, they make several different uh, witch hazel formulas, but I'm speaking to the, this one with aloe vera that has alcohol in it. And this one that is their aloe vera formula that is alcohol free. So that, you might find that to be helpful. Uh, but yeah, you, you know, it's up to you how your skin and face responds to it. I would mix and match and experiment a little bit. Um, you can also try Humphreys Witch Hazel. They're a very, very good brand, and this one contains alcohol. Here's something that I also do. I haven't done it on camera, but I got this tip from another wet shaver. I wish I could take credit for it because it's a terrific tip. What I do is uh, I get a fragrance-free aftershave balm, like Lubriderm Men's 3-in-1, and I'll squirt that in my hand, and then I'll get an aftershave like Clubman Pinot, and I'll put a few drops in there. Now I've got a scented aftershave balm, uh, kind of homemade. So I'll use a Clubman or I'll use a, a Bay Rum or Aqua Velva, Skin Bracer, you know, whatever I have. But uh, just make sure that the aftershave balm is fragrance free, that it doesn't have any scent. And then you can just add your scent. So you kind of get the best of the both worlds. You get a moisturizer with the actual uh, balm and uh, you'll get all the nice properties of the aftershave. Um, so kind of mix them up together. Mix them together and uh, you get a really nice result and I've been doing that lately and uh, it's been wonderful. Uh, I like having the balm and then having the scent from my aftershave there. All right, uh, Whip It 6636 says, hey, great video. If you ever have a garage sale, let me know. Mansfield, Ohio, ain't that far away from you, laugh out loud. <laughs> Well, he's speaking in the regards to the video review I did on the uh, Vikings Blade Crusader Frosted Chrome Adjustable Razor. Yeah, this is a beautiful razor. And yeah, I think this would go fast. I think this would sell very quickly in a garage sale, <laughs> to be honest with you. But no, I don't think I'm going to have any garage sale in the foreseeable future. I have a lot of heirs who will be fighting over my razor collection. Thank you very much. But um, nice try. <laughs> All right, Spence1000 says... The Maggard V3M for mild looks to be much like the Gillette Tech head and would be interested in seeing how you might compare that to the standard V3. But to my eyes, the V3 is indistinguish indistinguishable from Edwin Jagger's DE89 head. I found the blade alignment to be slightly off on a couple of attempts in putting a blade in the V3, whereas the DE89 is always spot on. Well, let me show you the V3 again. This was on my Scotch and Stowe handle here. And there's the V3 head, which is on the aggressive side, at least it is for me. And uh, here is my, uh, my uh, Edwin Jagger DE89L razor. And you can see, yeah, those razor heads are very, very close in design. But I agree with you that the um, razor heads on the Edwin Jagger are always spot on. 
and uh, whether it's the DE89L or the Barley Razor or uh, the Ebony Razor that I have or even the Kelvin, uh, every single razor head, the alignment, the blade alignment, the blade balance is spot on. The uh, Scotch and Stowe a handle, very, very nice, but the V3 razor head on this, which retails for about, I don't know, between four and six dollars, something like that. Uh, yeah, you do have to play with it a little bit, depending on the kind of razor blade you put in there, because not all razor blades are made to the exact specification, those little holes and guides that they punch through. So sometimes, yeah, blade alignment and blade balance is spot on. Other times, I do have to shift it a little bit. Just the nature of the beast. Uh, I'm sure that there are many razor heads that people have purchased from Maggard's where the blade alignment and, and blade balance is spot on. Sometimes you get something that, well, you might have to adjust a little bit. But Edwin Jagger, yes, absolutely spot on. In regards to the tech head, the V3 mile tech head, yeah, that tech head looks very, very similar to what I have here on the Vikings Blade Godfather, that tech head right there. And of course, this is patterned after the classic Gillette tech head right there. This is the Gillette Ball End Tech. This is from about 1950, 1951, right here. So you can see it's very, very similar. Yeah, and both of these give incredibly mild shave. This is a beautiful, beautiful mild shave from the Godfather Razor. And I would suspect that, that the V3M gives an equally mild shave. But blade alignment and blade balance on this is always spot on on this Godfather Razor. Okay, uh, Mike H says, Hi Mark, nice product review, thank you. The Osma is nice, but a bit small. And the Shash definitely seems like the solution. Best regards always. Well, thanks Mike. Mike is responding into, uh, to the review I did on the Shash Alum Block. Yeah, this is a nice solid Alum Block, 100 grams, 3.5 ounces. This is terrific. Gives a lot of coverage. Here, let me show you what the Osma looks like. Now, I've used this Osma block a little bit so it has worn down a little bit but yeah I've used the shash as well about, about an equal amount of time but yeah that's about probably about the difference in size so uh, you're getting a little more with the shash now the thing about the shash and the Osma is that they are cut from a larger block of alum and machined down whereas other alum blocks are made from compressed powder or pellets now let me show you the Parker right here and you'll see the difference the Parker is also a large block but you'll immediately see the difference. You'll see how that has a really different, a rougher consistency right there. It looks like it could have been pressed together. And I mean, I'm starting to get a little bit of wear, a little bit of a hole here. And um, it hasn't happened to me yet because I haven't used um, this kind of Allen block uh, for a prolonged period. But some reviewers out there say that the Allen blocks that are compressed from pellet and powder tend to crumble after a while. Um, these do not crumble and I will show you proof of it. Here's an Osma block that I still have and look how it's worn down. It's still one solid piece. Isn't that something? So that's why I use the Osma uh, and Shash Allen blocks. Now this is made in France as well and I contacted the Osma company and I asked them, um, you know, hey are you making the, the block for the Shash company, are you making those? And uh, <laughs> I know a little bit nosy, but I was curious. And a representative who, who will remain nameless wrote me back and said, Hi Mark, as we have some agreements, it's not possible for us to say if we're the manufacturer of different brands. But note that we're the last French manufacturer of alum stones. Uh, it may help you. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, yeah, I can't say that we make the shash, but if it says made in France, you know, hey, draw your own conclusions. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. And finally, Rodrigo Montesero says, asks, hey, Mark, I have another question. There was a number of questions he had um, in the comments area. Do you think it would be a good choice if I purchased the Crusader as my first safety razor and uh, set it to two or three, and then when I get used to it and get the technique, uh, and correct moves and set it to a higher level. Uh, you know what? That's not a bad strategy at all. At, at, at all. You could get this Crusader razor. It's a very nice razor. It's it's it really is heavyweight. It's got a nice handle. Has nice weight to it. 
and it does adjust from one to nine. And if you're just starting out with a traditional wet shave, you could set this to one or two or possibly three. Those are the mild settings. One, two, and three are mild. Four, five, and six are medium. Seven, eight, and nine are aggressive. And you could actually learn the wet shave at those lower levels and then move up from there and and uh, get a little give yourself a little more aggressive shave and i think it'd be a great razor to uh, learn the traditional wet shave with uh, however if it were me i would really have to be careful that i have the discipline not to be too anxious and turn this up too soon in other words give yourself a good two to three months at those mild settings don't be you know try to fight off that temptation of turning it up too soon too hot it's sometimes better I think uh, just to get a nice uh, mild razor uh, like a Chieftain Junior or an Edwin Jagger or even the uh, Merker HD 34C which they now call, call the classic two-piece razor in the Merker line and just use that and learn with that and learn the technique with that and that way you won't be tempted to turn it up uh, high but if you can if you can fight that temptation not to turn it up high too soon uh, while you're learning the traditional wet shave that would be a good strategy as long as you're not tempted to turn uh, too high too soon uh, while you're learning the, uh, the technique uh, okay hey that's it that's all that's that's great I'm, I'm glad you tuned in I really do appreciate it I hope you enjoyed it I sure did uh, I'm gonna finish up my coffee for the day Please share, please subscribe, hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below, let me know. Uh, check out my blog, georgetoon.com slash blog. For my comments with George, other cartoons, other videos like this. Check out my Amazon page where I have all the products I've reviewed on that page. So one place where you can find them, they're all categorized and organized for easy navigation. So you can find them there on my Amazon page at Amazon.com slash shop slash Mark's Ring. Thanks again for tuning in. Make it a great week.